Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? It is currently 9.33 p.m. I'm vlogging really late tonight. Do you remember how yesterday I said that I was going to put my reading glasses over here? That I was gonna go to bed early last night and I was gonna get a good night's sleep and I was gonna get up early today and I was gonna get all kinds of stuff done. Let me just tell you what happened, you guys. I, okay, this tooth pain business, first of all, several of you said in the comment sections, oh, I hope you don't have a dry socket. It sounds like you might have a dry socket. I'm starting to wonder if I have a dry socket. I did everything I was told to do, <laughs> so I'm not really sure how that's possible, but I guess you can get it anyway. Um, Unless it just is that this pain is just lingering so much. But last night, I was just like in really, really bad pain. And um, it, it seems to happen at several times. It seems to happen when I eat. It seems to happen after I talk for a long period of time. Um, and it also seems to happen when I try to lay down. And I saw some people say that they had to like sleep sitting up because like the blood would like, if they laid down, would like rush to that area and whatever. So I tried to sit up last night. Anyway, so um, I was hungry. And here's part of the problem is I'm hungry. But then when I sit down to make something, I like I start eating it and I'm just, I'm really not that hungry for it. So. Um, I made tomato soup last night and a grilled cheese, I think is what I made. And, um, <clears throat> and I had some potato salad, some red skin potato salad too. And even like the red skin potato salad was like hurting the roof of my mouth. And I got done eating, didn't even finish my meal. And I was like, um... I can't do this. Like, I, I, I just, I, I'm in so much pain. I was telling Alex, I was like, this is like unbearable. Like, this is unbearable pain. Um, he was watching, I can't remember what he was watching. I was watching something down here and then he went upstairs and then he had been watching um, Jenny and Georgia and then he switched it over and he was watching you. Um, so anyway, I was like, I'm gonna listen to a little bit of my audiobook. So if you don't know, I'm like way behind on my books. Um, I haven't, well, I hadn't finished uh, the Courtney Summers book, which was Peter's Book Club for January, I'm the Girl. And I hadn't even started or finished the True Crime Book Club, <clears throat> which the live stream was supposed to be yesterday, but it's gonna be this upcoming Sunday because we postponed it because of the uh, Super Bowl. And I'm just like really struggling getting back into reading and stuff, you know? And so I was like, I'm gonna force myself to listen to, I had like, um, so I listened to audiobooks at two times speed. I think I had like two and a half or three hours left of, I think I had like three hours left of the Courtney Summers book. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna listen to like a half an hour of it tonight downstairs and then I'm gonna go upstairs in bed and I'm gonna put my, <clears throat> my uh, beats, because Alex got me some beats for Christmas, my beats in while he's watching his show, and I'll listen to the half, other half an hour, and then Monday, I'll listen to another hour, and then Tuesday, I'll listen to the last hour and have it done, and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'll listen to an hour each of Dark Knight and Aurora, and then I'll have that book ready for a book the book club on Sunday. So I listened to the half an hour of... Um, of the Courtney Summers book. And then I went upstairs and I was feeling a little bit better. I, I felt like, okay, like this isn't too bad. And I was like laying there in bed. And all of a sudden it just like, it started hurting like crazy. And I just laid there and I was listening to the book and I listened to the book and Alex watched like an hour of the show. And so I actually listened to like an hour of the book. He went to bed. I, I put my AirPods away. I was like tossing and turning and tossing and turning. I was like so uncomfortable. I went through like, so I have 
<laughs> um, an ice pack that they gave me, but then I also have these like face masks, like two big face masks. And one was in the freezer and one was in the refrigerator. And so I was like rotating them, you guys, like, and putting them, because it just was like, that was like the only way that I could get any comfort was just like, put the ice pack and then my hand and then like sleep like this was like the only way that I could get any comfort. <clears throat> and so finally, I went up, I had gone upstairs at like, like midnight or 1130 or something. Finally at, like, I think it was like two o'clock or something. I sat up in bed and I just was like, I mean, I almost started crying. I was like, I can't do this. I'm not getting any sleep. I can hardly eat. As of today, I like got on the scales. I've lost like eight pounds. Um, I'm like, can't hardly eat. Um, so anyway, I came downstairs and I took some more Tylenol and I was like waiting for it to like kick in. And I ended up listening to the entire rest of the Courtney Summers book. So I finished that book last night. I listened to all three hours of it last night. It was funny because Mel and I were talking about it and she didn't love it. She said she gave it, I think, 2.5 stars. I actually really liked it. Um, but I do have to say this, that I think it's one of those books that, like, if you listen to, like, in all one setting or, like, over the period of, like, two days or something like that, like, I think that it's much more enjoyable. Alex is in the kitchen. He's making pizza rolls. I think it's much more enjoyable than if you... I don't know how long it took Mel to read, but... Um, than if you like span it over like a, a week or two because it's it's a slow it's a slow book um so I finished that and then I started A Dark Night in Aurora and um I listened to like a half an hour of that and then I was like I'm gonna go to bed so I went upstairs and it was the same thing and at that point it was like I don't know it was like five o'clock in the morning and it was the same thing with the ice packs and just rotating them. And I mean, it just was like, I was up and I was down and I was like sitting up in bed and I would go downstairs and I would get an ice pack and then I would lay there. And almost as soon as I would drift off to sleep, like it would get warm to the point where I like, I needed it to be colder again or like Boo Radley would move and then like I would wake up. And so finally, like Alex, like he got up and left for work and I looked at the clock and it was like eight o'clock and I was like, oh, I didn't, didn't even, like, I don't know what time I drifted off. It must've been sometime between like six and eight. And, um, I was like waiting until I think it was like nine o'clock to take my next dose of Tylenol. And so, um, I like looked at the clock and it was like 9.20, 9.15, something like that, 9.20. And I took my uh, next dose of Tylenol and then I got a nice pack and I came back to bed and I must have fallen asleep. I don't really remember it. Um, but the next thing I know, I woke up and it was the middle of the afternoon. Thank God I was able to get some sleep because I just was so tired. I just was like, you know, and the other thing is like, because of last week taking several days off to film videos it's like i'm not trying to take you know and i'm and in all honesty like if this continues to hurt throughout the week i may just have to take like a couple days off and not film videos i don't know like on any channel um so i have a dentist appointment on friday we'll see what he has to say then but I can't imagine it will still hurt on Friday. If I go in there on Friday, and oh, this is the other thing, is I can feel the stitches. I can feel like the string stitches, like with my tongue and it's freaking me out. So I don't know if they're coming undone or whatever. They're supposed to come out on their own, is what they told me. But if I go in there on Friday and I'm still in this much pain, um, then I'm just gonna take the weekend off from filming videos and I'm just gonna be like, okay, I'll come back on Monday and, cause Alex will be gone as of Sunday. We have the True Crime Book Club on Sunday and then I'm just gonna have to like, you know, not push it real hard. Oh, we'll see. But anyway, as of now, I'm just taking it day by day. So today I got up and 
you know, I had planned to film all these videos. Well, by this point, it was like the middle of the afternoon. I was thankful that I got some rest, but I was like worn out. I was so worn out because I'd had this restless night. And I was like, okay, you cannot film videos on every channel. And I also was like, if you do like a 10 or 20 minute video, there's a chance that that's gonna like put you out for not feeling good the rest of the night. And we had our marriage counseling session tonight. So I didn't wanna go into marriage counseling and just be silent for an hour. So I waited and I waited and I waited. And um, I did a drama video. And at the time that I did the drama video, like my mouth didn't really hurt. Like it was kind of like, I kind of like relaxed. I kind of just like, you know, sat, I went and talked to my neighbors because their grandkids were over and they were teaching their grandson, who's, he just turned four last week, how to play hopscotch. They had like the chalk, you know, in the driveway and stuff. And they were teaching him, she was teach, his grandma was teaching him how to play hopscotch. And um, so I was talking to them and um, I just kind of, it was really nice today. It was in the 50s and so I was kind of relaxing. And I was like, I don't even know that. Like, I texted Alex, and he's like, how are you feeling? And I said, not great. And I didn't get any sleep. And I said, I may, like, have to take the day off making videos. Like, I just, I don't know what to do. So then I started feeling better. And I was like, okay, I'm going to make a drama video. So I made a drama video. And I just looked, the video was like 22 minutes long. It wasn't even that, I mean, you know, for me, a drama video is a half an hour easily. I got, when I got done making that video, this entire side of my mouth hurt. It was like, I shut off the camera and it was like, oh, pain just came over me. And I was like, I don't understand why. It's like when I talk that it's hurting. I mean, it makes sense, right? That your jaw is going to hurt and things like that, but... By the way, I just took my hat off. I didn't do my hair or anything like that. So I was like, at that point, my plan had been to start uploading my drama video and then turn around and um, start filming my vlog, to have my vlog ready to be uploading when I went to the marriage counseling session. And you guys, I just couldn't do it. I just, I was like in so much pain. I just was like, I cannot talk. Like I have to really hold off. And I still hadn't taken Tylenol since nine o'clock in the morning. I was trying to wait as long as I could. Tanya just said something to me when I was talking to her on the phone. She talked about getting ahead of the pain. And I was like, yeah, I guess I know that, but I, I hadn't thought of that. So, um, so I took a shower and I got ready. And uh, I wore my new compression socks that I got. <laughs> my friend Valerie told me I should order compression socks because it's good for people that have high blood pressure. And so I ordered these really cute compression socks. I'm gonna actually do a whole video. I ordered like six pairs. Well, I ordered like five or four or five pairs of them. And then I ordered a mystery pair. And I ordered, I wore one of the pairs tonight. And um, they're real high. They come up like, like almost over my knee. Well, I have them like kind of pushed down a little bit or they would come over my knee. Um, but they're really cute and they're very comfortable. But anyway, and then I wore my new Team Sweet Team C's sweatshirt that I never thought that I would ever get, but it finally came in the mail. And um, I don't know when it came, a little bit ago, um, a little while ago. And yeah, and then went to the marriage counseling session and then Afterwards, Alex was, he had been eating cookies all day long, Valentine's Day sugar cookies at work. So he wasn't really hungry. So he took me to Fresh Time. I was really kind of wanting, like, he, I, I was really kind of wanting some kind of sandwich. And Alex was like, I really think you should just do something soft. You know, you, like soups. You just have to do a couple more days of this or whatever. So I got some of that Panera mac and cheese. I got some more tomato soup. I got some more potato salad, um, just kind of stuff like that. Got mayonnaise to make grilled cheeses, and um, that's my new thing. I love the mayonnaise instead of the butter on the grilled cheeses. And um, when I'm feeling better, I want to do this Peter Does Stuff video with this Tillamook cheese. 
that Caroline told me to buy, which was actually, it was funny because we were watching the commercials at the Super Bowl last night. Oh, that's what we did. Alex, like, I went upstairs to lay down and I wasn't feeling very good. And he said, I said, what are you going to do? And he goes, I'm going to go heat up some food. I'm hungry. And he said, I'm going to watch the commercials up to the halftime show. And then I'm going to watch the halftime show. And I said, oh, well, I'll come downstairs with you. And that was when I made the grilled cheese and the tomato soup. Um, and we watched the commercials and there was a Tillamook cheese commercial, which I thought was funny because I had bought that cheese to do this review on my, um, well, not really a review, but just to do it on my Peter Dustoff channel. So anyway, I took the Tylenol, finally. I waited like 10 hours and took it right before we walked into our marriage counseling session and I don't know, maybe I waited too long. I thought it would kick in, it, like it, I don't know, about 10 or 15 minutes into the marriage counseling session, um, it started to feel a little bit better. But by the end of the session, it just felt like it had like most of the day. And, um, and then I got out of there and I just was like, oh God, I'm in pain again. And then I just taken the Tylenol so I don't have to wait to take the Tylenol again. So, I don't know, I just told Alex I was upstairs laying down. He came downstairs to make some food, but I was upstairs laying down with him. And I said, if I could fall asleep right now, I would go to sleep. Like, I'm exhausted. And, um, I mean, this is really, really draining me. It's crazy to think that, like, dental work can be this, like, draining, you know? So... That was my day. Oh, and so I wasn't gonna vlog because I didn't vlog before we went to counseling. And then we got home and I was like, I can sit down for 20 or 30 minutes and I can vlog. I wanna keep people in the loop um, and things like that. Um, so. Yeah, depending on like, well tomorrow, this is the other thing. <laughs> so tomorrow, um, I'm going with Tanya to dinner. So Alex and I talked about it. He's like, yeah, babe, we can do Valentine's Day whenever. So I think he and I are going to go somewhere for dinner on Wednesday. And then she and I are going to go to dinner tomorrow with some friends for um, her birthday dinner because that was her birthday was last week. So that's tomorrow night. And then we're going to go to our meeting tomorrow night. And then Wednesday and I, so I don't know, like, I'm supposed to go to that. I'm supposed to be at her house by 6 tomorrow, and usually I'm at her house by, like, 7.15. So if I get my stuff together and get my vlog done, I'm, I may end up not vlogging tomorrow night, depending on, like, what time I get home. Or if I do, it'll be, like, when I get home from going to my meeting. But I don't know. I'll, that's awfully late for me. Like, sometimes I like to just relax after that. Um, and so um, there's that. And then... Then Wednesday night, like, depending on what we do and, like, you know, how I feel, all that kind of stuff. So, we'll just have to see how I feel. It's a beautiful evening. Have you guys been hearing about all this UFO stuff? These UFO sightings or UFOs being shot down and stuff like that? Like, is that really happening? That sounded so silly, didn't it? These compression socks are so cute. I wish I could show them to you, but I want to save them to show them in this video. But they're like uh, dark blue and light blue, and they're polka dots. And they say Wello on them, because that's the brand. I think I was going to keep that a secret, but I didn't. Right now I'm wearing them with Birkenstock plastic sandals, but I wore them today with my cream um, Birkenstock clogs. You know, these last two days have been so nice and just like sitting outside and feeling like I'm part of the world again has been really nice. I was looking at the weather over the next like two weeks and I don't think that we're supposed to have like really bad weather. I think Alex is supposed to have pretty nice weather um, in Spain. I did order uh, my mother-in-law some going away pre presents, so hopefully they get here in time. 
Um, by the time that she leaves, they're supposed to be here tomorrow, so we'll see. So still. In the still of the night. I love the stillness. I was talking to the Uber driver on the way to the appointment. He was such a nice guy, and he was telling me that he had lived in Indianapolis for, lived downtown for 13 years, and he and his wife had lived this other place, like on the west side, for so many years. And they had recently moved to a, a small town up uh, north, and um, he was like, "Yeah, we just wanted to get away from all of the like the the city and the you know the." the hustle and the bustle of it all of it, and all of it. And he said, you know, we're still like in the city part of a small town. But he said it's like quiet by like nine o'clock at night, you know? And I said, well, the neighborhood that I live in, it's, mo it's mostly older people and that like have retired and moved in there and whatever. And um, I said, it's really nice. I said, it's like there's, you know, the only traffic that comes through at night <clears throat> It's really if people are like walking their dogs and things like that. It's very cozy. <clears throat> I love it in here. It's so crazy to think that like I remember when my mom was alive. And she would say things to me like, one day this will be yours. And I would say, mother, I will never live in that condo. <laughs> I will never live in this old people's neighborhood. And she'd say, well, you might someday want to. I don't know. And then, you know, look. All these years later, here I am living in this neighborhood, and I love it. I love talking to my neighbors, and I love sitting on my front porch. And Time changes your perspective on things, you know? I think t time and experience give you new perspective on things. And the things that you thought you might never want are the things that you end up wanting the most, you know? Back in the day, I wanted such an exciting life, you know? Adventure and excitement. <clears throat> I think it was... Ian Tyler, the author that coined the phrase armchair traveler, and I feel like that's as far as I want to go as, you know, adventure. I mean, don't get me wrong, like, as far as adventure, I love to travel and stuff like that, but I don't need any crazy excitement, you know? I think sometimes about, like, Like in my younger years, you know, I mean, even before Alex, I would, you know, like in my 20s, when I did start going back out again and stuff like that, you know, I would go out all the time with my friends and whatever. And I mean, we thought we were, so, we thought we were the answer, you know? And um, I mean, this is after I was sober, you know? And I think about all those times that like, I mean, I did have, like, we did do, like, game nights and dinners and stuff like that, too. But, like, and, and I had good times going out and dancing in bars and looking for guys and, you know, picking an outfit out. I had fun doing all that. I really did, you know. But at the same time, I feel like I wasted a lot of time, you know, where I could have been. I don't know, just enjoying having a conversation with one one person or whatever. I remember this guy that I dated, Todd. He's passed away. He's the one that I talked about that I found out a couple years ago that he had passed away. His parents didn't put out an obituary. They never had a funeral for him or anything. They were really anti-gay. And so when he came home to live, he wasn't really able, I think he was, I think he was really sick and he wasn't able to live his life authentically. And, um, <laughs> I think about, so he was my second boyfriend after I got out of treatment. Not smart to do that, by the way. 
And I can remember, we would just, I would light, you know, 10 candles, five, 10 candles, and put a, you know, a starter log in the fireplace, and make a pot of coffee, and we would just like, and turn off all the lights, and we would just like, smoke one cigarette after another, and have all of these like, as Simon and Garfunkel say it, set it, dangling conversations, you know, we play music in the background, and oh god, this song, and oh, that song, and we had all these amazing conversations, and you know, Tanya and I were talking about that not too long ago. It's like, people want opinions today. I was just saying this in my video the other day, wasn't I? People want opinions today. They don't want to have conversations. They don't want to learn. They want to have opinions. And if you don't agree with their opinion, then you're wrong, you know? And then that ceases to allow conversations, which ceases to allow relationships. And I think it's really partly why we don't see as many authentic relationships being built. You know? I don't know. I miss that. Not just with Todd, but with all of my friends. God, I had so many friends of mine that we would sit. My friend, that I, my roommate, she and I would sit up. I mean, when we were drinking and afterwards when I wasn't drinking, we would sit up and just talk for hours and... I had so many friends, you know, sober and not sober, before I was sober and when I was sober, that we would just have endless conversations, you know? I can't tell you how many hours I have spent around Tanya's fire pit having just conversations about the most random things, you know? Those have been some of the best nights of my entire life, when nights like this, where it's the sky is completely clear and you can see all the stars, I can see the stars tonight. You know, and you can see your own breath, and you can fire smells good, and you know, and you're drinking coffee like this, and you know, and, and you don't want to leave even though you're cold, because you got blankets covering yourself, and you know, and everybody's telling stories, and it's I love that, I love that, you know, that camaraderie, that fellowship, of getting to know one another, and sharing experiences and sharing stories. I love that. It's one of my favorite things ever. You know, I think, I don't know why this makes me sad, but I think when I look back on my life, you know, of some of my favorite experiences that I've ever had have been those smallest moments that I have shared with other people just talking. Literally priceless moments, you know? Anyway, I'm not going to get super sad today on here, and uh, <laughs> I have so much to be grateful for. And I'm going to get off here, and I'm going to try to go in and, I don't know, eat something, maybe cook, cook up some mac and cheese or soup and some, or something. And um, I'm going to start uploading this vlog so it's not up at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but thank you for hanging out with me today. I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Monday and a wonderful beginning to your week. And if nobody else has told you this today... I love you. Remember these three very important things. One, you can start your day over whenever you want. Two, practice random acts of kindness, but shh, don't tell anyone. And three, most importantly, make sure that you reach out to somebody and let them know how much they mean to you. Listen, listen, Linda, <laughs> you'll be putting a smile, I'll never say that over here. You'll be putting a smile on their face, you'll be cheering them up, making them happy, making their day. And why wouldn't we wanna do that, right? That's priceless as well. And also, be kinder to one another, love one another a little bit more, and be kinder and love yourselves a little bit more. And I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love you. Oh, and a happy Valentine's Day to each and every one of you. Bye. Love you. Bye.